And what's going on, Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com. And we're back on another one, this time with Machine 2.6.5. And I just had a member question. This is going to be a really quick tutorial video. Someone was asking me how to tag kits. Now, this is something that we covered in the past. And you can review that video if you want to get more in depth when it comes to you uh, going through your projects, your groups, you know, your instruments and effects and all that good stuff. I'm not going to go through that in this video. So if that's something that you want to see, I would suggest you go see our importing kits and tagging uh kits video and take a look at that all right so first thing i want to say i want to apologize uh for the sensitivity of the microphone i'm using right now because this microphone right here right now i'm, I'm home right now and i have a super super sensitive uh microphone in my room right now like for example you can hear me stabbing my fingers and you're probably going to hear you know this and you know me tapping on pads and all that and it's raining outside right now so i'm getting rain in the mic you know, when the AC's on, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the wind blow. So, you know, that's the first thing I'll say is apologize. You're going to hear some background stuff going on in the mic. But anyway. All right. So to pull up the screen, when it comes to importing your kits, you're going to want to go to uh, your, your, your file, your preferences on Mac. You're going to click under the machine to icon here. OK, you go to your preferences. When this preference box comes up, you want to scroll down to library, man. Go into user. This is where all your kits are going to be uh, imported. All the rain's dying down, thank God. All right, so you can press add, select your kit. Your kit will show up here. When, what happens is when you select your kit, you just press rescan and the kit comes in. So to make a perfect example for this uh, particular instance, I'm going to use uh, the 120 school units HD kit that we have because this is a kit that I formatted just in a wave format, <clears throat> but I didn't tag and filter it for machine. Even though I just put a, a you know our VIP Sound Lab attribute on it, I didn't format this kit for machine as far as you know the kits and all that good stuff so this would be a good example to use therefore it's going to put you in the sense where if you have a kit that you want to tag after you scanned it you'll you'll understand how that works a lot better because what happens is if you have the artwork uh you put it in the image folder and the image artwork will show up like this nine times out of ten on our drum kits we include the imaging uh, for our kit so you don't have to worry about going through you know the madness of going ahead and making you know artwork off templates or whatever but if it doesn't it'll just be a little blank you know waveform you know like this here okay so for example if i click this one here because again this is a kit that i didn't format for machine so i didn't bother to do the artwork however you can do artwork when i click on that it brings up the kit it'll look blank like this okay and to comparison a little, let's say something like um let's grab like i don't know this 4k drum ignition as you can see right here has the artwork everything is done and that's the difference between that all right so i'm gonna go back and again i haven't put everything on this computer because this is a new mac this is an imac imac computer that bought and you know i still have a lot that i have to put on this computer okay so we're going there um the kit itself as you see right here all the sounds appear here now this is completely unorganized so if i click on the sound here as you see right here, if I start going through the sounds, you know, that can be kind of messy and troublesome. So what you can do is you can go to this icon right here where it says all banks. Okay. There's a little drop down menu here. Any folder that's in the drum kit will appear here. So how I do mine, I like to do mine in a chronological order. So let's say if I, select on the 808s here and all the 808s appear here what i like to do i select the first sound and then i hold shift on the last one like so okay which was kind of like a really pitched up 808 right there and then from that point what you would do is you would click on edit okay there's a little icon here where you can adjust the view on that to get a better view on that again this one's already labeled why because i want to put our vip sound lab uh, icon on it so that's not going to hurt anything. But what you would do is you would click here under this plus icon right here and you would type in the name of your kit. And in this particular situation, the kit name is 120 Scoville units HD. So this is what you would type. OK, here you would click enter. And when you do that, it's going to show up as this little uh, guy right here. OK, you select your box. Now, from this point, these are just your filters and your attributes, meaning that when you're on your hardware controller, when you press browse, you're going to have the option to go through, OK, your samples, for example, effects, your instruments, 
your sounds, your groups, as well as your projects. Okay. And by going around, or rather by clicking browse and then on your machine controller on the left hand screen, the first two buttons is how you can scroll through these attributes like that. So what happens is you want to narrow that down to different types, for example. So let's say if I click on this icon here and these are 808s, so I can type in 808s like so, you know, maybe HD, you know, just make it look, you know, just make it look like something that can help you a lot better when it comes time for you to press browse and be going through your uh, machine sounds when I mean, you're going to be loading up, you know, sounds, instruments, you know, your favorites and things of that nature. Click enter. OK, so now the attribute appears here. And if you want to narrow it down even more, uh, I don't know, you might want to put sub it could be like some sub 808s, uh, whatever, the, whatever the case may be. I'll just put sub bass like this here because I'm not getting like really, really super, super detailed because that's for just that. Uh, let's go like here, that one particular sound now. Yeah, I, I could do it that way. I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and click, click apply like this and let me go back to the other ones like this. And let's just say, for example, you know, right now I'm not going through each one. I'm not going to go through each one. I'm leaving that one blank. I tag that one one way. So that one's going to appear a little bit different. I labeled it as sub base for this one. Same thing. You know, you would, you know, put the kit name here in this particular situation. I'm calling it this here. And this time the 808 HD attribute that's there. Normally it can go under sub base as we've done there. That's one way you can do it. You can click apply. But let's say these were something different. Let's say these were more, uh, okay, we'll put 808s. Let's say these were tuned 808s, specifically tuned a certain way. Tuned, and I want to break it down even further. They were tuned 808s. Maybe let's say these were distorted 808s or something like that. I'll just type in distorted. Okay, those are some distorted 808s. OK, and you would click apply. OK, and it would be tagged and filtered. If you want to go a step further, you can click on the properties. As you see right here, this has basically all my attributes already done because, you know, I already tagged. them. But, you know, for you, you know, you would come here, you know, type in the vendor. You know, the vendor name might appear here. Uh, it's not letting me do it right now for whatever reason. But, you know, you can go into here and you can uh, type in vendor names, stuff like that. You know, you can leave a little comment and you know, like a little reminder or something like that. Nine times of ten, you can go in and you can select certain vendors and stuff like that when it comes to if you're having certain libraries imported. OK, and then from that point, you know, you can double check your work, make sure things the way that you want it, then click apply. OK, and you can click out the edit button here just so you can take a look at what's being tagged so far. Now, this is just we, this is just what's being tagged so far because I haven't done the rest of the sounds. And you can see right here, the 808 HD appears here the tuned ones up here here. So if I click on these, that's just going to be that one little sound that I did and it's narrowing down. Okay. The sub base. And then again, you can do that on your hardware controller as well. Cause on the left hand screen under samples is the first box. It would, it would have the kit name followed by the 808 HD then the sub base. Then that's where you can select your pre here volume. You know, you can select the pad you can select load on your hardware controller and it loads up, you know, like that. All right. So continuing on, Here's the tuned one. Here's all those uh, particular instruments here and distorted is how we filtered it. So you can narrow that down like that. OK, and then from that point, the process, you know, basically just repeats. So if I went to the hi hats and just to make this, you know, a lot quicker, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to select them all like this here and just do this quicker. Boom, boom, boom. Again, you put the kit name here. The kit name shows here. This time I'll go in here. I will select hi hats like so. OK, and without going, you know, super detailed, you know, over here, you know, you might want to put open and closed, you know, something like that. You know, it's open and closed. Hi, it's in there. The properties, again, they're already in there. Click apply. And this is where I do it and just go in a chronological order like this from top to bottom. To me, it just it just flows easier that way. Again, you put your kit name again, already done. OK, these are kick drums. 
I'll put HD. I'll put punchy. Put punchy kicks. You know, just make some examples. Okay. And then I will go to the snares. Ending off with the snares here. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. This video didn't run too long. Because again, we have a more detailed video on this. That's why I'm not going super, super in depth. You know, if you want to go through the whole, you know, format from beginning to end, watch our video on importing kits from the VIP Sound Lab. You can take a look at that video. Okay, so again, kit name, you would type it here. These are snares. So I'll put snares. HD, because they're high definition snares. Narrow it down a little bit more. Crispy. Crispy and crunchy. You know, however you want to label it. And of course, again, the properties are done. Click apply. Okay, those re import. Okay. And you just close the little edit icon down here. Collect this X here. The kit name appears here. Again, here's the kit. And these are all the attributes that we put. We put the, uh, the 808s HD. We put the 808s tune, the hi hats, the kick drums HD, the snares HD. Okay, so if I select it on 808s, there's that one little guy who's filtered down the sub bass. Okay, if we went to the tune 808s, here's the ones that we did that were distorted. Okay, here's the hi hats here. Again, open and closed. Okay, so then if we went to the kick drums, okay, here's all the kick drums, punchy. Okay, and snares, crispy and crunchy. Okay, then from that point, you can get into other areas uh, to make life a little more easier. Uh, you know, perhaps you might want to take some sounds from here, you know, and let's say if I want to, let's say some kick drums like this here. And what I did was I just started loaded some kicks on here like this here. Okay. For example, added them all on. Then I went to some hi hats. Then I added these on like so. And again, with our kits, we, we do this for you. So you don't have to go through all this, you know, cause sometimes this could be aggravating for some, for others, they like to custom build their own kits, but you know, we have everything in there for you. Makes nice templates. And let's say some 808s, we'll put some 808s on the end down here. This would be a real dope little beginning uh, kit here. I think my mic's even picking up some, <laughs> some sounds from the TV and living room. Okay, but anyway, then from that point, you can hold shift, right click on, let's say, Hold on, I missed a pad there. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. On four pads, color, you might want your kicks to be green, okay? So then from that point, on this particular screen here, as you can see, all the kick drums are labeled in the same color, okay? Just for organizational reasons, if you're on the MK2 in the studio, you know, it's gonna make it really easy visually. Whereas on MK1, you know, it's not so visual, but you know, you have the ability to do it. Hi-hats here. We'll right click. Okay, maybe we want these ones to be blue. Snares. We'll right click on these. We'll make these purple in 808s. We'll have these as maybe like a teal color, teal like blue color. And clicking on these pads are sounding off only because I have this icon selected here. You know, same thing when it comes to your pre here volume. If you select this guy right here, that mutes it. So if you don't want to be bothered by the sounds over here in this menu, the only thing you have to do is just turn this off. Okay. And that's pretty much how that works in this little uh, icon right here. If you didn't want to, you know, import the MIDI notes with them. Because a lot of times with group sessions, you can have uh, MIDI uh, patterns imported as well. And this right here controls your pre here volume, you know, so if you're like me and you don't want, you know, an extremely loud, uh, you know, pre here when you, you know, cause you're going through a lot of sounds and you get kind of really noisy, you know, you might want to turn this down or, or turn it completely off. Okay. So then from that point, you're making what's called a group kit. I'll name it 120. Scoville units. 
we'll say kit one, like so. And what's happening is it's saving it inside machine two, group kits, and the folder is going to appear. And again, there's nothing in here because I haven't done anything on this computer. Save. Now the kit name appears here. So, all right, so that's pretty much it. Your boy Fontaine, www.vipsoundlab.com, showing you how that you can uh, import your kits and tag them. That's pretty much it. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.